Hello, I'm Idaho State Representative Heather Scott from District 1, and I just wanted to share some information with you and talk to you a little bit about what's going on in Idaho and what's happening with our businesses and talk a little bit about the jab. So right now we have healthcare workers that are being told if they do not take the jab within two weeks, they are going to be fired from their jobs. And this, this, is, um, this is absurd. It's going to cause a major crisis in our hospital care and our health care system. At the same time, we have uh, President Joe Biden saying that all federal employees and on-site contractors need to share their vaccination status or they're going to be subject to masking, social distancing, and testing requirements um, until they are fully vaccinated. And we also have the president um, looking into forcing all of our military to be vaxxed. And I'm guessing you've done your own research by now on what's going on, and I won't get into all that. Um, the World Economic Forum is also connected with a lot of global companies that are forcing their back to the masking. Even in my district, they're... Um, forcing the mask, and we, we know what's coming with the forced vaccinations. And so people are fearful, and, and they're expecting government to protect their rights, which is the job of government. And unfortunately, it's not happening. And some, some people are even, I, I've been getting calls like, hey, do you know a good lawyer? My rights are being violated. I, I don't want to share my medical information. And... Um, Unfortunately, these these courtrooms are the same courtrooms that are violating people's rights. When they come through the door, they're forcing them to put a mask on. And so uh, do you really think you're going to get a fair trial in a courtroom when they're already violating your rights um, and forcing you to mask up? I, I, I don't think people get it yet. Um, hopefully more and more will wake up, but our our country and our state and our government appears to be at war with the average individual citizen. And um, I think the sooner people wake up to that, the, the better off they're going to be. Because then when they know that someone has declared war on them, they will be able to, to react and to, to uh, be more proactive in, in what they're going to do about it. So... Um, a lot of calls have come to me is like, why won't the legislature uh, get involved? Why, why aren't they going back into session and doing something about it? And that's kind of what I want to explain in this video a little bit. So at the end of session this year, uh, we had the Senate that basically adjourned sine die, which means they're not coming back unless the governor calls them back. The House did a little better and they just did a recess which means if they want to call, if we want to call ourselves back into session as a house, we can do that. And we can address some of these issues that are happening to Idaho citizens. Um, unfortunately, one person makes that decision and that is the speaker of the house. And, and he has said publicly, well, oh, we're waiting to see if the governor wants to call us back in. That's the type of leadership we have currently in the house. And that's, that's a real problem. But there's another political thing going on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about. And that's kind of what I want to share, share is how politics is in play behind what the job of government should be, is to be addressing these injustices and protecting the rights of individual citizens. But what we have, um, so the Speaker of the House is the one that can call us back into session. And it, it's um, public knowledge that the Speaker of the House is running for Lieutenant Governor. And he's also, uh, there's also another couple candidates in the race for Lieutenant Governor, um, a guy from North Idaho and, and then uh, Representative Priscilla Giddings. So we have two legislators that are running for this higher office. Um, the interesting thing is the Speaker of the House uh, recently, if you get my last newsletter, you probably followed this a bit, he filed an ethics suit against Representative Priscilla Giddings. 
Um, uh, lots of people have their ideas on why that may have happened, but um, he he makes all the decisions in the House. Um, over time, the legislature has given him the authority to do as he wa as he will, and and a lot of money was put into those ethics hearings against his opponent, Representative Priscilla Giddings. And so now he's kind of in this political predicament because the other gentlemen running, they're competing for big pharma money. So we've got, um, we've got two people competing for big money, and then we've got Representative Priscilla Giddings. And, and Representative Priscilla Giddings has actually ran a bill last, last session, which was earlier this year. Um, it was uh, House Bill 140. And it was called the Medical Consumer Protection Act. And what this bill did is it said employees or companies that contract with the state of Idaho cannot discriminate against unvaccinated persons. Now that's exactly, that, that bill would completely take care of what's going on um, in our hospitals right now. And so you see the dilemma here. If you are in the position to, to, to make the call, to call back into session, there's that bill out there on the table that your opponent has written and tried to protect the people. And so then when you do that, you're going to get Big Pharma mad at you and Iaki is going to pull back their money and they're going to support the other guy in the race, which I won't even mention that guy's name because it's probably not worth mentioning. So um, anyway, that's all the politics going on behind the scenes um, on why, you know, they're playing politics while you guys, the citizen, are suffering. And, you know, I, I get calls all the time and they, I don't think people understand is the legislators down in Boise to make those decisions that are, are making decisions on your future. We're in the minority that are working for you, the citizen. There are more rhinos um, and, and rhinos and Democrats that are teamed together uh, that are working for the system or, or other parties and not the individual citizen. And so we are outnumbered down there. We had so many bills to stop mask mandates, um, business bill protection of rights for businesses if the state can't come after you. Um, I had a bill that would end the emergency. They, they're not going to let that bill see the light of day. And that's the reality with the people in this state that are representing the citizens from around the state. Um, and, and unfortunately, I'm not sure if they're going to call back session or not. It's, it's really it's really in the hands of the Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke. I'm not sure what decision he'll make. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an election year and things get weird and people want donations and people want support of the people and they want to look good. Um, you know, it, it, the, all the Secretary of State information is out there. You can look at where all the money to fund all the candidates, such as um, all the leadership candidates, they're all coming from the same place, big corporations, big pharma, big business. And so, you know, if, if you start working for the people, you tick off those guys. And so that's, that's kind of what's going on politically behind the scenes. Um, you know, just a couple other things to just let you know. Uh, I, I encourage you to get involved locally. There is a ton of money coming into Idaho not just into the state, but straight into your cities and your counties and your school boards. And that money, a lot of it, when we were in session, the strings weren't even attached to it. And, and I heard one legislator say, and I like it better, it's not strings attached anymore, it's ropes and chains attached with some of this money. And, and the thing is, Idaho, we're sitting at a $900 million surplus right now. And it's projected for another 500 million by the time, by next January. So that's, we're sitting on $1.4 billion of extra tax money and extra money in the state. And um, they're, they're loaded with money and, and they, can't, they can't return to session. They can't return any of that money to you. They can't pass one bill like the grocery tax repeal to give you just 
you know, Idaho's one of only five states that fully taxed groceries. Uh, why, with sitting on all that money, can't we give some of that money back to the average citizen, to the individual citizen who needs it? Um, but, but that's where we're at, and that comes down to the people you elect for office. Um, that, that's why it's critical. I, I, if I could encourage you uh, to do anything right now, show up at your city council meetings, show up at your county commissioner meetings, and show up at your uh, school board meetings. There is so much garbage coming into this state from the federal government, and, and the leadership we have has taken every penny of it. And, and you know, uh, so, so something else, you know, that the executive branch is completely um, in control of this state with all that federal money, giving it out to all their cronies and all their business partners. Um, we just passed a bit, we, we just passed something last session. The legislature actually agreed that we do not want our kids tested for this COVID and stuff shoved up their noses. And you know what happened? Um, the second we're out of session just last week or two weeks ago, uh, Governor Little finds $30 million in federal money so he can test your kids. So they can collect all that information on your kids. So I'm telling you, our state's a mess. Those of you who think it's conservative, uh, you need to wake up because these legislators are not working for the individuals. Um, everyone who says they're conservative, you need to really look into what they're saying and, and, and how they're voting. And um, I encourage you to call them and say, if, if you want them to go back to session to address some of this, this huge surplus to give you back some of that money in the form of maybe a grocery tax repeal, um, if you want them to stop these businesses from mandating masks, masks and vaccinations and, and whatever, who knows what they're going to do next, um, now is the time to call your legislators and encourage them. And, and I'm not, you know, you, you've got to pay attention. Most people don't even know who elect, who's, who's working for them. And so um, I encourage you, if you don't know who your representatives are, go to um, Idaho, who's my legislator? Just go to Idaho.gov, who's my legislator? Just Google that. And you can put in your address and you can find out who represents you and you give them a call. And if you can't find the information, you call me. I'll get you their voting records and you can see what's going on behind the scenes down there because people, we don't have much time. I, things are happening so fast. I, I've been encouraging my community members, get out of debt, build your communities, build your networks because I think we're coming on hard times. And um, this government seems to be at war with every one of us. And, and I just encourage you to network and, and um, just get prepared because I'm not sure government's going to fix this. I don't think there's a political fix. I think there's a people fix. And I'm counting on the people of Idaho to maybe lead the way in this nation. So thanks for listening to my video. And um, I hopefully I'll get some more out and, and keep you posted what's going on. And and um, I, know, I know we all want to enjoy our summer, but we got to get busy. So um, thanks for watching.